Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the latest in our webinar series from Essex Cricket in the Community, and supported by our colleagues in all the neighbouring counties as well. Um, welcome to this evening's session, which is hopefully going to be on helping you to create a development plan. I hope it doesn't sound too... Simon, over to you to introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Graham, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to um, talk about uh, development plans uh, this evening. Um, just a bit of background, I've been asking about myself. Um, most of my career was spent in Whitehall, including the Department of Culture, Region and Sport, where I was head of strategy at one time. I worked on sport policy, at uh, one time in the Prime Minister's strategy unit, and then more recently, from 2008, working head of sport for the Mayor of London, the previous Mayor, Boris Johnson, and the current Mayor, Sadiq Khan, uh, and I left uh, there last year. So I've got a kind of um, background of writing policy and strategy, and uh, so what you're about to see really is uh, what I've been asked to provide to you this evening is really just some general basics of writing a, a, a development plan. Um, these are basics that are pretty applicable to anything, whether it's a cricket plan or uh, selling widgets, it's, the principles are pretty much the same thing. There is a, an ECB template uh, which will be available uh, on the website after, um, after this session for you to look at. This is kind of my own take on it. it this is not an exhaustive list, nor am I for one moment suggesting that you have to do everything within this. And indeed, many of you will be familiar with the sorts of things that will be in a plan. You'll, you may well have written your own and, and be familiar with what I'm about to show you. But, but I've been asked to do this this evening for those who may need just a little, uh, little help and may have not have done one before, just to give some ideas. So it really is just for you to take from it what you feel you need or what you feel applies to you. I don't want it to be too onerous. Um, I'm quite aware uh, I play cricket myself, long, li uh, long uh, lifelong cricket fan and player, and I'm well aware that um, for most clubs, simply getting a team out or getting someone to do the tees is, is the extent of uh, the time that, um, that they have available. This is a hobby, so I'm not, you know, I'm not suggesting that every club has to do everything within here. Um, but I do think that, um, that planning anything, whether, whatever it is, at any level, is obviously a good thing to do, um, particularly at a time at the moment, of course, when we're going through this awful time with coronavirus, the future is uncertain, and how are clubs, how are we all going to um, fare if we get some cricket this season and, of course, uh, going into next year? Who knows, will we be able to keep and recruit our uh, recruit new players and keep the ones we've got? So this is a kind of run through. Um, you're probably doing much of this already. So this is just a way of formalizing um, uh, some of the things that you may well be doing already. Graham, you're going to take the first three slides, I think, aren't you? Yep. Thank you very much. Um, and also, uh, just take this opportunity to remind everyone that's used to the webinars uh, and perhaps those that are new tonight, we have the chat room, which hopefully you can find on your screen. If you have got questions for Simon or myself, um, please enter it on there and we'll do our level best to answer a few at the end. And if it's too specific, we will come back to you individually um, and, and answer that question. But I think as Simon has already said, the first few slides I'm just going to show you tonight are very familiar to all clubs that have got club mark because we've encouraged clubs to use that over the last few years as a way of looking at their whole structure of their club Club, whether it's a lack of players, whether it's a desire to get more volunteers, whether you need to improve your facilities or your finances, but really to look inwardly at your club and, and see, have you got enough supporters? Are you actually working with everyone in your club, making them aware of what your intentions are and where you want your club to go in the next five to ten years? And we're strong believers at ECB, and I'm sure if you talk to any of the successful clubs in the county 
It don't have to be big clubs, but clubs that have got a good foundation. A lot of it is built on that strong sort of governance at the bottom where they know where they're going to go as a club and then the rest of it falls into place because they've got, got the right basis for it. And I think we're going to be coming out of this uh, situation now with an ideal opportunity for clubs to perhaps, if they haven't already been considering it, re-evaluating where their club's going to be. For too many clubs, I feel, it's all about just Saturday afternoon cricket. We've got a venue there that's available in a lot of places, seven days a week throughout the summer and quite often into the winter as well. What do we do as a club to make the most of that in our whole community? And are we sharing it? Are we really making people aware of what's about? And this might just be an opportunity for clubs who I'm having a lot of conversations on a daily basis about their possible risk of even surviving throughout this issue. And we're just trying to throw out some ideas tonight that maybe look beyond just that Saturday team. Are there some other areas that make your club worth investing in? So hopefully I've not taken too much of your uh, agenda, Simon. I'll let you speak for a, a long time now. Thank you very much. Um, okay, Dan, if you can, uh, Dan's clicking uh, on the slides. So Dan, if we can go to the, that's it. Uh, so th this is a summary now of what we're going to cover, um, which is the rationale for a development plan and why it matters. Just some suggestions for content, some tips uh, for how to write a plan. And um, as I said before, it's just take from this what you need. Um, and then just have a quick look at uh, kind of look and feel of a document with some format and just some examples as well. So that's what we're going to cover in the time available. We've got till 5.30. Um, so the rationale basically um, is that there has, in the last 20, 30 years, and certainly in recent years, an increasing drive to professionalise sport, whether that starts from the sports governing bodies, which the ECB is a part of that. Um, but there is an increasing drive to professionalise sport right the way down from, from, um, from governing bodies uh, through to clubs as well. And of course, in recent years, with the advent of things like the National Lottery, funding is linked to minimum standards. And we all have to comply with those standards in order to get the money. So kind of whether we like it or not, there's a carrot and stick involved with having to do this stuff. But of course, um, good planning and governance applies at any level, whether or not you're a, a small club or, or a large club uh, playing in the league, the, the principles can be the same. Next, Dan. So the first thing I think, um, for reasons we've already talked about, this is a hobby, okay, so let's keep it simple. Let's keep the plan relevant to your club, uh, keep it proportionate for your needs. It could be a hundred page document, it could be one side of A4, but keep it proportionate to your needs. And um, of course, what it has to be for you and the resources you have available, it has to be suitable for what is really practical delivery. Otherwise, of course, the whole thing is pointless. Next. So, um, Keeping it in, in, in with a, an eye on keeping it simple, I think there really are four key stages, key elements to any sort of plan. Starting, and we will cover these points in turn, starting with analysis, analyze the current situation before you get started. You, you then need to formulate your plan and we'll go through these stages. Then of course, it's about implementation of that plan and how you review that plan going forward, but then, which then feeds back into the analysis and we, we go around in that sort of strategy planning cycle as a continual thing. So it's not a kind of linear thing, it's going around at each stage, um, reviewing, analyzing, and adjusting as we go. Next, Dan. So in terms of um, getting started, uh, before you start, clearly you need to identify who's gonna write the plan, who's gonna hold the pen on this thing. It may be more than one person, there's different chapters, but you need one pen holder and identify who's actually going to do it. And clearly you need to identify what resources and support he or she will have. Will the committee help? Who's going to kind of help in act as a kind of, uh, as a mentor or as a critical friend to whoever's writing the report? What is the scope of the report? What's it supposed to cover? Is it supposed to cover every part of a cr cricketing aspect? Is there non-cricketing aspects it's going to cover? Be clear about the scope of the report and what it's going to cover as part of that. And what is the timescale for it? Is it a year, three years, five years, 
50 years. Uh, again, be absolutely clear about that. Three, three years tends to be a, a pretty standard one, but you may want to look at longer term uh, goals as well. Who is it you're going to consult with? Clearly your players, your members. Um, is it, do you need to think about parents? Consulting them as a local authority. Consultation as part of this, local businesses. I don't know if you're trying to get sponsorship. Um, and there may, may well be a, an avenue into Essex and Dan's team. We'll say some more about that as well. And then clearly, what's the timeline for completion of the plan? Um, I would suggest setting yourself a date or you can find yourself drafting a plan forever because everyone will want to just one more thing and add something to it. So set a clear timeline for completion of the plan. And then finally, how are you going to, what are you going to do in terms of publication uh, and future use of the plan? How are you going to publish it? In what format? Okay, Dan. Um, I think if I could just kind of, if you were to just look at this slide and take away just this slide, I, I think I could almost stop here because for me, it is really very, very simple uh, in the sense of, of, of what we should be doing, I think, is being having absolute clarity absolute clarity of where we are now, where we want to be, and how we're going to deliver. And if I was writing any strategy, those are the three key elements that I would do for anything. And an absolute clarity about that. Um, if you get that, then um, you're, going to, you're going to be well on your way to having a, a pretty decent uh, plan and whatever it is. So uh, to me, Dan, if you could just click, to me that uh, encapsulates pretty much what I want to say. And if you can do that and have clarity about that, um, then I could almost stop talking. But let's keep going, Dan, and let's move on and just look at those three things in there in turn. So where we are now, um, you might want to just, in your plan, just have a little bit of background uh, and, uh, about your club, a little bit of history about it and the journey that's got to the point that you're at. There clearly needs to be some analysis of your, of your, of your club and make that very honest analysis. There's no point in that analysis um, not being honest. You, you, you're doing yourself no favor. So be really honest about analyzing the current situation of the club. Clearly, if you've got visions, aims, and values, etc., cetera, um, that's great. It's good to know what you do stand for, how, we're going, how you go about your business, um, and the values that you do as you, um, as in your employees, you do that. And of course, everything you do should link to those values and those aims. Be clear about, in your analysis, what resources you have, whether they be human resources, the kind of coaching and other, and other um, uh, people that you have and the skills that they bring, what physical resources you have, whether it be uh, facilities or other, uh, other assets, and of course, what financial resources do you have in terms of budget. And for those of you who are familiar with SWOT analysis, it's something that some clubs do, some people do do a, a, a SWOT analysis before, uh, you actually decide to uh, to kick off. So it's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats for those of you not uh, familiar with that. But there's plenty of guidance on what to do. So an absolute baseline assessment of where you are as a club is crucial uh, before you kind of decide what it is you're going to be doing and how you go about doing it. Okay, Dan, next. Um, so you've decided you've got your baseline, you've been very honest and you've had honest conversations around with your stakeholders about where you are. And the next step, of course, therefore, is, is to be very, very clear about where you want to be. And again, absolute clarity about that. So have a very, very clear vision for your club. Have very clear targets for the period that your report covers, whether it's three, five years. And as I said before, do you want to have some longer term goals, maybe 10, 15 years? Have some very, very clear targets linked to your vision and your aim, um, because it would, Dan, you're going to, could you go back, Dan? We're, we're, that's it, just, just wait for the nod, thank you. Uh, and have some very, very clear objectives, uh, some smart objectives, which we'll talk about uh, in a moment. So uh, again, absolute clarity about your baseline, absolute clarity about where you want to be. And I think, as I said at the start, it may just be about survival, and not being what you see in front of you, um, um, you know, having, having uh, closed down the club because you know you've no future, so it's avoiding what you see in front of you. It may well just be about survival and, and not ending up like you do in the photograph. Okay, Dan, time for the next one. Um, it may well be that you decide that, of course, you're going to win the league. Your first team's going to go on and, and win the division and march on to glory, and that may be 
part of your planning. It may be, uh, the next slide Dan please, you may decide in fact what you're looking for is world domination and in fact nothing's going to get in your way uh, as you march on towards glory having won your league and you're going to take over the world. But actually there's only one team from in the league and in the longer term what you're looking for of course is something a little bit more modest and a little bit more realistic about that and something that's actually sustainable uh, in the longer term rather than a sort of 12 month, two year uh, peak where you may win the league, but what comes after that and how can you plan for the longer term? Okay, Dan, next slide, please. So what does your club look like? Does it look like this? Does it look like uh, a lot of white middle-aged men, aging men? Um, is that sort of reflective of your club? Um, is it something that you uh, have looked at and aspire to change? So it may be, Dan, if you could click on the next three slides in turn, that'd be great. Do you want a youth section? Do you want to encourage more women and girls uh, into the sport? And indeed, do you want to actually consider how you can get disabled people to play uh, cricket in your club and really broaden and diversify the people um, that you're engaging with in terms of uh, how you're going to access uh, the future and recruitment as well. And finally, the final bit on this one, Dan, please. There's the smart um, uh, uh, slide for you that, that, that explains the, the, the SMART um, acronym. You want specific measures, you want them measurable, you want to be able to achieve them, they have to be realistic, realistic and make them timed as well. Some of you would, would be very familiar with that. Okay, the next slide please, Dan. And then of course, the big thing, how are you actually going to deliver this? What is it you're going to do? But again, you have to be very, very precise. It's amazing how often that doesn't happen. I, I, you know, myself have been involved with clubs who say, well, we've got to have more players, you know, can you ask around your mates to see if we can get more players? And of course, everyone goes away and, and, and somebody might have a conversation with somebody else, but no one's actually in charge of, uh, 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 of doing that. And so, you know, maybe not a lot, not a lot actually happens because everyone thinks everyone else is doing it. So, you know, who's leading that? Who's leading that, those tasks? And be very, very clear about ownership of specific tasks. Identify the resources that you need. Are you making the most of the people and the skills you've got within your club? You know, you've got the people who can give their time, you've got an accountant who can do the, the budget. Are you making good use of the resources that you've got? Um, what funding might be available to you? The ECB have funding, the lottery funding now on stream, Sporting and of course. And not so much funding, but in terms of club support, I mean, the work that um, the Essex Cricket and, and Dan's team does, with the people like Graham and, and uh, the people uh, that work for, on, on Dan's team, I, I can't um, commend them highly enough. They're, they are fantastic. So the support there, if you want it, I don't know if I've given you too much billing there, guys, but <laughs> the, work you do, the work you do is fantastic. So there's a lot of support there um, uh, for, for clubs that, that isn't just about money. What structures do you have? Is your committee structure right? Do you need to set up a, I hate to use the phrase subcommittee or a working group for women and girls, for example, um, but, but have you got the right structures to deliver what it, what it is you're looking to do? How, do you, how are you sharing the workload? You know, is one, if, there's that whole thing about one person's doing everything, that poor person's running around, uh, maybe a benevolent dictator, but you know, one person doing everything is quite common. And what happens in terms of succession planning? So, um, share the workload, um, be prepared to learn from others. There's plenty of good practice out there. And of course, be prepared to do things differently. So Dan, the next, if you just click please. So, you know, what is it you're doing as a club? Are you just focused on traditional forms of the game played in a traditional setting? You've done that for years, it's been successful. Is that what you're gonna do in future? Or are you going to consider some alternatives? Next two slides please, Dan, one after the other be fine. Um, would you look at alternative formats such as tape ball, for example, quick cricket in, in non-traditional settings, urban cricket, the Everywhere a Cricket Ground um, initiative by the ECB is fantastic way of, of providing or showing how to um, provide cricket in a non-traditional setting and in a non-traditional way. Um, next photo, please, Dan. And then to what extent do you want to engage with the local community beyond the work that you're doing within cricket. 
Um, I, I, you know, there's, there's so many ways of doing that. I, I could talk a long time about that. And it sounds like we've got a session on this next week. But there's a photograph there um, of uh, Pip George and I think Colchester, is it Graham? Doing some food bank um, activity in the community. The cricket team with the difference that Essex is running is a fantastic way of clubs engaging with their community, all of which will help you to integrate further with the community and potentially give you some new players out of it. So next slide, please. I'm conscious of time. Um, let's have time now, I think, to just have, have a quick look at uh, a sort of look and feel about some practical examples. So if you can click on the uh, next bit, please, Dan. This is a very simplistic <laughs> uh, visual um, um, iteration of what I've been talking about. If you've got your aim over on the left-hand side, you may have three or four objectives and then uh, action sitting within each of those things. And of course, they all should link together. It would look very odd uh, if, if the actions, the objectives and the aims were sort of slightly different, but try and make these, those look as if and, and make them link together in some way. And then if you click down, of course, everything you do should be underpinned by the values that your club has and the way you go about your business and the values that you, uh, that you adopt. Uh, next slide, please, Dan. Next slide, Dan, please. Thank you. Um, oh, no, go back. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Graham very, very helpfully sent me, um, and it'll be helpful to you, some, some, a couple of really, really good examples um, of uh, some development plans. One was from Molden Cricket Club, and then this one from Gallywood Cricket Club, and both of which are, are, are excellent. I'm sure there are plenty of others. Those are the, just the two I saw. Um, both excellent examples, and we thought we would just, I'll just show you this one uh, extract from it, but the, the whole plans will be available after this uh, seminar. And I've got to say that the Gallywood one in particular is one of, the, one of the best I've seen. It really is excellent. I have no affiliation to Gallywood, by the way. But um, this sort of thing, and this is just one page from it, sets out pretty much what I'm, what I'm, what I'm talking about. You can see across the top there where it says reference number. Each action has a number. There's a very, very clear uh, activity. Um, it talks about emphasis. It talks about the area of the club. There's a link to the, each objective. And then there's ownership um, of that activity there. And that, that is a really, really good way uh, of bringing to life exactly the sort of thing I'm talking about. So next slide, please, Dan. Um, and then finally, really, what we're looking at is, is the format of your plan. Is it going to be a web base? Are you going to produce hard copies? Um, what's it going to include within it? I'm not suggesting it should. every plan should include a risk register. Uh, or a comms plan, you might expect it to see some sort of budget in there. But a comms plan can be a very good way of just telling people what you're doing and showing the local community uh, that you're welcoming um, uh, them to your club and, and explaining and showing that you exist, basically. And then next one, please, Dan. And then finally, um, of course, what you want to do is monitor and review your plan. Identify regular monitoring points, almost certainly going to be through your, local, through your, through your committee. Um, but keep it under review. It's a, you know, it gives a living document. Don't let it sit on the shelf, that old chestnut. Um, and then consider timing for the next version, because before you know it, you'll be through the plan and you'll be, it'll be time to start thinking about the next one. Next slide. I've said it before. If you, take, if you remember one thing, please just remember this one thing, this one slide where we are now, where we want to be, how we deliver. If you focus on those things, get those things absolutely clear and right, then I think you will do pretty well. And then we're on to the last slide, Dan, thank you. Uh, and just to say thank you, um, I've kind of rattled through um, at quite some pace uh, my own thoughts about that. As I said, there's an ECB template, those Gallywood and Molden ones will be available for you. Happy to take questions or maybe to follow up um, after this session if there isn't time. But I think we're, we're close to time. So that's it. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Simon. Absolutely brilliant. Um, hopefully uh, some valuable information for clubs. And I, I think the important message is, again, pitch it at the level for your club. Don't feel 
compelled to come out with massive documents if your club doesn't need it or if you're not resourced at this stage to be able to do that. But I, I strongly believe there's a chance here for clubs to really think about where they want to go. And I, I think the, uh, the idea, Simon, of sharing with your local community, perhaps get in touch with a local parish council or something, show them what your plans are. I think one of the very important bits of perhaps developing a plan is that it will certainly help you when you go for funding. To be able to share with an, uh, a funding body exactly where your club is trying to go, what you're trying to do, can only enhance your application. Um, and it, if it's something that is achievable um, and looks relevant, I'm sure they'll be wanting to help you. Uh, and also just a, not a plea, but a request from Natalie, who very much leads on our women and girls, that if women and girls is a, a subject that you're very keen to develop as a club, um, perhaps consider that as a little subsection, put it in a separate document. So that when you're discussing with Natalie um, here or in a separate group at your club, but that has got a distinct section and, and can work through because it might get, not get lost, but if it's in a big plan, may not get the focus that perhaps you're looking for. But um, can't thank you enough for that, Simon. Um, Natalie or Dan, oh, I don't know on the question and answers tonight. Have we got anything in the chat box? No, I think just Simon covered so much information there that was really interesting. Just probably one for you, Graham, um, with the around club mark and the potential changing of, of that going forward. Is there a specific format for club mark? Um, clubs have used like the four Ps in the past, or as Simon says, they're just doing what's right for their individual club will, will suit club mark's needs. Thank you. Uh, good question, Andrew. Um, I, I, for now, I quite like the document that was produced by the ECB, the club mark one. We can share that with any clubs that have not seen it before. Equally, some of the stuff that um, Simon has given us tonight is equally, well, is even better than what we've got. So I, I don't think there's any hard and fast rules. Clubs are not obliged to use any of the um, templates or anything we've given. We're just there to sort of try and provide support. And I, I can't urge clubs enough. Um, everyone knows that we'll always help you at Essex. And if clubs want to sort of talk through elements of how you develop a plan or where where to look next, um, please, please do get in touch with us because we can't, um, you know, help you if you don't get in touch. And we don't want clubs in the same way that we've tried to help financially and make sure you're sound. We don't want to hear clubs folding because of a lack of players or a lack of ability to go forward. Um, and this may be just that chance to speak to us to try and help that. Um, so I hope that's helped tonight. Um, I think we've just about used up our allotment of time if there's no other questions. Um, just a, a quick advert, but next week uh, we have two more webinars as hopefully as usual. Uh, Tuesdays is a wider community engagement. Uh, that's at midday. Um, and on Thursday, uh, we will have another webinar on the women and girls uh, game at present. Um, as always, they should all be recorded. Um, so if you do miss them, then hopefully you better catch up. So Dan, unless there's anything else, um, thank you very much for your attendance.